For our tilted cylinder, we were able to look at and think about what axis to rotate around. However, we usually won't be able to do this. If I gave you two arbitrary vectors and said, quick, what's the axis of rotation? Best of luck to you. I sure couldn't do it. Happily, there's an easy way to get the axis of rotation, and it's called the cross product. In 3JS, you call it like this. It takes two vectors as its inputs, and the result is put into the vector 3 itself. The third vector is, in fact, the axis of rotation, or at least one of them. The direction is determined by the right-hand rule. You wrap your hand from the first vector, in this case our cylinder, to the second vector, in this case the y-axis. This then points along the axis of rotation. If we computed the cross product of these two vectors in the opposite order, we would go from the y-axis to the cylinder's vector, and would get the opposite rotation axis. Recall how the dot product gives us the cosine between two vectors. The length of the cross product result is in fact proportional to the sine of the angle between the two vectors. There is one special case I'm going to point out, and it's kind of a headache. If the cross product gives back a vector that is of length zero, or nearly so, then the two vectors are either pointing in the same direction or in directly opposite directions. You can use the dot product of the two vectors to figure out which. If they point in the same direction, then you're done. You don't need to rotate at all. If they point in exactly opposite directions, then you need to rotate 180 degrees. However, the rotation axis you'll get back from the cross product is actually zero, 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 which is no axis at all. At this point, you basically need to choose some arbitrary axis that is perpendicular to your vectors and use that for rotation, or just form the rotation matrix directly. Here, for example, I use the x-axis, since I know y is going to be perpendicular to it. See the additional course materials on a good way to solve this problem in general. The mathematical notation for a cross product is this, a big X. The length of the vector produced by the cross product is equal to the sine of theta, that's the angle between the two vectors, times the length of A, times the length of B. The cross product itself is computed by multiplying neighboring elements of the two vectors' coordinates. For the x-coordinate, we multiply ay times bz, and then subtract az times by. For the y-coordinate, we multiply az times bx minus ax times bz. I like to do this kind of x-cross thing here, as we did before, so I tend to take this and wrap it around to this side, so it's az times bx and ax times bz. For the last coordinate, we do the same thing, ax times by, minus ay times bx. At the end, we have a vector that describes the axis of rotation from one vector to the other. And in fact, this vector will be perpendicular to both of these two. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to use this vector later, you're probably going to want to normalize it, because its length will be pretty obscure.